Dakota, is this your new dog house? Yeah, some of you don't care about the weather, but some of you do. So I thought I'd show you that today is beautiful. It is foggy. It's 59 degrees. Not a bad day for August, especially considering just a few days ago it was 110. Ah, oh, what a gorgeous day. The first step for this project is to get the steel. And I don't go after it. There is a company called Salina Steel, based out of Salina, Kansas, which is pretty much central Kansas. 118 miles from my house. And as long as I meet their minimum order, which is really easy to do on about any project, they deliver it to my door for free. So there's a semi way off in the distance coming down the road. I didn't get any more footage of that. And I simply unload it with the Kubota tractor and put the steel where I need it. I debated about using the band saw, the big band saw. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to use my porter band to cut this stuff up. That way I don't have to load it into the band saw. And I thought it'd be a lot easier using the porter band. I don't get quite as straight edges, but for this project it worked out just fine. And it was a lot faster that way. I've already built one of these loading chutes, and I had a pretty good drawing of what I wanted to do, so it was just a matter of just cutting out pieces, slapping them down, and start spot welding everything together. Here I'm having a little fun trying to measure from corner to corner, so I know if this thing is square or not. Yeah, we've all been there, right? I finally grabbed a weight and stuck on the corner. And believe it or not, this thing was actually square on my first go. I didn't even move it at all. Here I am putting in all the little cross members and making sure they're square and level and where they're supposed to be. Here I'm just verifying that my angle is right. I knew what it was according to the drawing, but in real life sometimes that doesn't work out. So with that side welded, I flipped it over and welded the other side. And I did leave some welds unfinished on what would end up being the bottom side, just so water could drain out of it. Here I'm starting in on the overhead arches. Kind of hard to see. I didn't think about having the door open, so the footage is pretty dark, but I think you can tell what I'm doing using the overhead hoist to raise these things up into position. It's a little tricky because these things are taller than the beam for the hoist. So I couldn't just lift on top of them. I had to go up past the beam. This also means I had to start on this end of the chute and work my way to the other end because I can't run that beam past those arches anymore. And since these two are so tall, I decided to go ahead and put in the cross member, keep them from wiggling around so much. And also, the cool morning didn't last very long. It hit 102 right after lunch. Ugh, not fun. So at this point, I was going to put that arch into place, the upright overhead, whatever name we're calling it. And I realized if I do that, I won't have room to build the last two uprights. So I'm gonna have to move that thing off to the side right now. Matter of fact, I think I'll just put it up against the other arch. And then I'll build the other two before I actually weld these into place.
Pretty nice seeing this much of the project completed already. This is going fast with all new material. I like it. That's always a trade-off between new material and scrap material. New material, it costs more, but you can build the project really fast. Scrap material is cheaper, but you spend a lot more time working with the material, you know, especially with the hand grinder, getting that stuff clean so you can weld it, prepping it, doing all that stuff. You spend a lot more time working with it. Then it was time to start working on the ramp side of the chute. What this loading chute does is it divides the cattle, I guess is one way you could say it. Um, if you got an 18 wheeler that you need to load into, you'll use this side with the ramp so the cows can get up into that 18 wheeler or the cattle pot. And if you notice the other side is at ground level, so if you're using a trailer you pull behind a pickup, that's a low trailer, then you can back up to that side and load the cattle out there. Or unload them too. And for this ramp I decided to use some scrap metal I had laying around. I actually planned this in advance before I ordered the steel because I'm talking to the customer and he said that was fine to save him a couple hundred dollars and use some scrap there. Oh, here we go. Watch this. Yeah, you want to see that again in slow-mo? Right behind the steel toe. Uh, that hurt. Then I had to start in on the sheet metal under the ramp before I actually put the decking on the ramp. And to cut all this sheet metal, I'm using my Milwaukee Dry Cut Saw. Seems to be a lot of confusion about this saw whenever I use it. This saw is designed for cutting steel. It is not a regular circular saw. But it rips through sheet metal in a hurry. This thing is amazing. And it's just a matter of spot welding it in place. And then go back and finish welding it. And I put on the deck. And I thought I designed this ramp and foot sheet would fit right up in there, one full sheet, and then cut off the corner. And that corner would flip over and go on the other side, fill in the gap. But for some reason, I was an inch short. So I took it over, cut off the corner, because I need to do that anyway, and then went ahead and cut it in half. And the reason I cut this in half is so I could use that square tubing in the middle to give me an inch gap. And that ended up working out a lot better anyway, because it's a lot easier to handle that size of sheet metal than a full sheet. Well, good morning, world. It is August 30th, and it is a glorious 47 degrees out this morning. Well, it was. That was our low for the night. Shop is down to 64. Feels wonderful in here. So today is just more of the same old, same old. Putting in braces, putting in sheet metal. I want to see if I can get the majority of the sheet metal done today. I don't see any reason why I can't. It should only take a few hours in theory, right? Anyway, let's get on with it. Apparently we have to pay the puppy tax first. I guess I'll give away one of my secrets to push the sheet metal out so I can spot weld on the other side. I put a piece of square tubing in here, stand on the square tubing, reach over and put a spot weld on. It definitely saves you some burnt knees. All the sheeting is on except for the sheeting that's going the gates. That is very exciting. Then it was time to put the catwalk on the side. Then 
it was time to make the gates and I decided to use oil filled tubing to make these gates so I could do a pipe and pipe hinge design. Here I'm making the hinges, drilling the holes and threading them for research. But I regret doing that because it took forever to clean this old oil filled pipe to the point where it could be painted. I'm not going to paint this, the customer is, but he still wanted to prep so it could be painted. If you look at the left side of that gate, you'll see the pipe over pipe hinge design there. And the last thing I had to do was put on these lugs on the ramp and I used galvanized metal for that because I forgot to order two inch by quarter inch angle iron for that. I do believe it's done. I need to walk around it one more time make sure I didn't miss a weld or something somewhere. Otherwise near as I can tell it is done finally. It took a little longer than I was hoping. Um, ended up just basically right at 30 hours in it. I think I just want to smidge over that. Um, the idea is there will be an alleyway here where we're standing. So with the gate in this position, you can put your cattle into a low trailer, like what you'd pull behind a pickup. Or you can switch this gate. And now you can run your cattle up into a semi-trailer or 18-wheeler trailer, whatever you want to call it. We call them cattle pots around here. So yeah, that's uh, that's the whole thing. Now I gotta get it out of here. I did deliver this shoot to the customer. So if you want to see how I got this thing out of the shop and how I delivered it to him, there's a video on that. So see if the card is up here in the corner of your video. Or just check my channel, see if there's a video on delivering this thing. It is worth watching if you want to see where I live and the roads that I travel all the time out here. You get to see 35 miles of dirt roads that are in terrible shape. If y'all want to see more details about the how and why, I do have a really long series on the old one I built from virtually all scrap. It might answer some of your questions. So, alright. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see y'all in the next video.